today we're going to be talking about cable internet and how it works. Now, here we have the internet connected back to a CMTS. CMTS stands for Cable Modem Termination System, and this is located within the ISP's office. Now, on one side of the CMTS is a router interface which connects back to the internet, and on the other side is a modulator demodulator which is connected to the coaxial cable interface in your modem. Now, let's say you decided that you are going to get cable internet. Now, the first decision you have to make is are you going to lease that modem from your local ISP? Or are you going to go out to your favorite tech store and buy a modem? Now, if you decide to buy a modem, you need to call your local ISP to find out what DOCSIS standard should that modem has. Now, every modem made since 1997 has a DOCSIS standard from DOCSIS 1.0 right up to DOCSIS 4.0 in 2017. Now, the DOCSIS standard within the CMTS has to be the same as your modem or it will not work. That is why you have to call your local provider to find out what DOCSIS they're using so that the modem you buy would be the same DOCSIS standards as your provider is currently using. So you contacted the cable internet provider for your area and they told you which DOCSIS modem to buy. So you went out to your favorite tech store and picked one up. Now before connecting that modem, you need to call your cable provider again to register your new modem by giving them the modem's MAC address. All modems have a MAC address. The MAC address starts with MAC and a group of numbers after MAC. Uh, this MAC address is usually located at the bottom or the back of the modem. And if you should ever change that modem for any reason, you need to inform your local ISP in order to register your new modem. Cable systems will not work with a modem whose MAC address is not registered on their network. When you connect your modem to an active cable jack, and power up that modem. The modem scanned the download frequencies on the coaxial cable looking for 64 or 256 cam digitally modulated signals which are the type of signals sent by your CMTS. Once this signal is found, the modem would search for a key piece of information within the signal called UCD. UCD stands for Upstream Channel Descriptor. This information is needed for the modem to know what upstream frequencies to use to contact the CMTS. Now, once this information is found, the modem would use it to try to contact the CMTS using the upstream frequencies given. Uh, now, first it tries sending a signal to the CMTS using the lowest power settings since it's unaware of how far away is the CMTS. If the modem gets no response from the CMTS, it raises the power by 3 dB and try again. Now, the modem would repeat this process until the CMTS is reached. Once the CMTS is reached, the CMTS would automatically send a confirmation file with the downstream and upstream bandwidth and communication timing for the modem to use during communication. Now the modem will set up all of the parameters given by the CMTS. And once the CMTS is aware that the modem can communicate with the new parameters given, the connection between the CMTS and the modem would be completed. Now once there's a communication link between the modem and the CMTS, you will have 
a link light on the modem. This link light here would be solid. Now the next step is for the modem to get an IP address. And this IP address comes from the DHCP server. However, the modem does not have an IP address to communicate with DHCP servers yet. What it does is to send a request to the CMTS and the CMTS would relay this information to the DHCP server. Once the DHCP server re received this request from the modem, it will check the registration information on this modem within the authentication server. You remember we, we talked about the fact before the modem is plugged in, you want to call the ISP with your MAC address and this is the kind of information that the DHCP server is looking for within the authentication server. Once this information has been validated, the DHCP server will send a public IP address to the modem. Once the modem receives this public IP address, it will contact the CMTS to complete the registration. If the CMTS is happy with the way the modem is set up, it would complete the registration and the modem would be able to get on to the internet. Now, how you would know if that registration is, is processed even before trying to get on to the internet is that the online light here would be on solid. That tells you that there's a connection to the internet. Now the CMTS supplies data on the cable not just for one modem but for many modems which are connected through a hub within that area. Now every 30 seconds the CMTS sends out frequencies for each one of these modems to operate on for both upstream and downstream. It also sends out timing and this timing is for the upstream because the upstream use time division multiplexing which simply mean that each one of these modems have a specific time that they send and this has to be precise because if it is not precise modems will be sending in each other's times and you will be getting collisions on the upstream back to the CMTS. So every 30 seconds the CMTS sends out this timing information just to keep these modems in sync so that they're sending in their particular time slot only. Here we're going to be talking about how you get data from the internet through your CTMS across the coaxial cable to the modem. Now you're not just you're not talking about data for one customer, you're talking about data for all the customers. As you see here, the data come from the internet through your CTMS is data for all of these modems. Okay, all the modems connected through the CTMS. Remember, this is the shared medium. So we have to get all the we have to be able to send all the data for all the different customers together across the coaxial cable. And that's what we're going to talk about. Now the data comes in from the internet through the router interface of the CMTS. It goes through the CMTS to the modulator side of the CMTS. Frequencies between 85 megahertz and 1002 megahertz are what we use to transmit this digital data across the coaxial cable. This data would be approximately 1 gigabit in size for all the modems. This frequencies between 85 megahertz and 1002 megahertz are broken up into 6 megahertz sections. And your 1 gigabit of data is broken up into 43 megabit sections. And each one of the 43 megabits of data is modulated in a 6 megahertz channel. So each one of these are 6 megahertz channels with 43 megabits of data. So if you add it all up right up to 1002 megahertz, you'll get 1 gigabit of data. It would actually be just over 1 gigabit of data that would be transmitted from the CTMS over to the modem. Now once the data gets to the modem, it's demodulated and your digital data is separated and sent off to the computer 
connected to the modem. Now coming back from the modem end, you have three megahertz channels and your digital data is broken up into 31 megabit sections and modulated into these three megahertz channels and sent off to the CMTS. When this data gets to the CMTS, it will be demodulated and sent off to the router and then off to the internet. Right now, as I said before, we're using DOCSIS 3. The difference between DOCSIS 2 and DOCSIS 3 is that the frequencies are higher. We got higher frequencies. They all start at 85 megahertz and work the way up. But um, DOCSIS 3 go a bit higher in frequencies than DOCSIS 2 did. So this is one of the reasons why we can get a bit more bandwidth with DOCSIS 3. But the most important one is that we get more channels that we can use and I'll explain that right now. With DOCSIS 2, each modem only had access to one channel. Okay, just one channel and that's 43 megabits per second. That was the maximum speed for a modem because it only had access to one channel. But with DOCSIS 3, each modem has access to four channels minimum. That's the minimum. Four channels downstream and four channels upstream. There are modems that have access to 8 channels downstream, 16 channels, 24 channels, and 32 channels. And the upstream goes from 4 and 8. So 8 is the maximum number of channels up. So you can have a modem that has 32 channels down by 8 channels up. And that would be the fastest. And that's quite fast. Like I say, for instance, you have a modem like that. And you moved into a brand new subdivision where there's nobody else working on this cable but you, you could actually get the full um, 1 gigabit of data. That's if you're paying for the 1 gigabit of data, you can get the full amount. The cable internet service rides on what was traditionally the cable TV service, using one cable for all the customers in the local area. The, the cables are already there set up in that way. So the internet came along and cable providers had to find a way to get the internet to work with on the same facility. So that's why you have all of your customers using the same cable, whereas if you look at the telephone, they have their own individual line for each customer because that's the way the telephone was set up originally, one line from the central office to the customer. So they don't share bandwidth with the DSL line, but they do share bandwidth with the cable. However, the cable have much more bandwidth to share than a DSL line would. Now, during peak hours is when you have problems with cable, not on normal times. Like on peak times, everybody's on the internet. So you would have more customers using these channels on peak times than you would on off hours. You may not be able to get your full bandwidth during peak hours as you would during non-peak hours. So that's the downfall of cable uh, versus DSL. However, cable is much faster. And, um, and, and, and I also want to mention that um, I've been asked this question quite a bit. Which one do you, would you recommend, cable or DSL? And it's like apples and oranges, really. Um, if you are a gamer, um, you want to have cable because it is much faster, you have um, much less latency. So if you're a gamer that play these um, multiplayer games where there are a lot of players online and you're all playing together and you want to have a fast line. So cable is the best thing to use, especially if you have more than one um, person in the house playing games. And so definitely you want to have cable for that. However, um, if you're the type of person that just, just get online to go to websites and maybe watch a few videos on YouTube or whatever, a DSL line is fine. If there's just one person in the house doing that, um, an ADSL line is fine at 8 megabits per second. Uh, however, if there are a lot of 
people in the house all watching videos at the same time you probably could you could still go with DSL but you would want to get the, a VDSL line which is at least 50 megabits per second downstream cable is a bit more expensive for one it has much more bandwidth and unless you're going to be using that bandwidth there's no need to spend that much so it all depends on what you're using it for so I hope this video has been helpful to you and if you have any questions please don't hesitate to send me those questions within the comment area. So if you would like to see more videos like this one and you haven't subscribed as yet, uh, please don't forget to click on the subscribe button below so that you'll be alerted as soon as our new videos are released. My name is Trevor from Telecom Training. Thank you for watching.